Hello, I'm Tap G. I'm Surfer Clock. And I'm Stella Bellarella. And we're What's the Attraction? Where our work is your vacation. vacation. Thank you all for joining us for this next uh, live broadcast for uh, What's the Attraction, in which we get to discuss the latest rumors that were announced at D23. Woohoo! No, the rumors, uh, no, more like confirmed stuff. Exactly. We kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that were rumored about, more or less, but we kind of want to wait until after D23 and make sure what was confirmed. The last thing we want to do is talk about the rumors that were only just rumors, so kind of here they are. Um, uh, so, And um, just a couple of disclaimers here. Of course, you know, uh, we don't have any affiliations toward any of the companies, Universal, Disney, none of them. Um, this is just us just kind of talking about this general thing um, as a whole. And um, we, we are going to be critical in some parts, but let, let the record show we're doing this just... We're doing this because we love Disney. For all the benefit of all the companies, really. But mostly Disney in this case. Yeah, I mean, let, let's be honest. Some things just won't be as great as they would be unless they actually had... Um, some negative criticism so they could just rebound and just punch him in the face. Cough, cough, Pandora. Cough, cough. Well, just saying. No, oh. I mean, here's here's the thing, too. Um, it's going to be, you know, this is still, this is not even done or built yet. So they still have time to improve upon it. Yeah, yeah. We could say things today and they're completely different by the time we get back to it. Um, there, there were a couple of rumors that they had, um, that were circling around on Facebook and the internet in general that... Um, I was hoping they would announce, but they didn't do the the um, Journey into Imagination getting into, into an Inside Out ride. Was, nothing about that. Uh, the Brazil Pavilion replacing the train in Germany. Uh, Zootopia replacing Rafiki's Planet Watch. And, if only. Yeah. Well, as long as they keep the veterinary, like the Zootopia Hospital or something. <laughs> and then Hollywood okay. Studios getting the new name. You know, Iger said like three years ago that it was going to get a new name and... We're still waiting. It's got to get a new name. It has that, to. That four-year-old's been waiting for three years. <laughs> Leroy <Not so>. Jenkins. <laughs> That's not the name. We, no. No, there's not even rumors. So oh, don't, if don't only. Get your holds up. Oh, if only. So we're going to go systematically through some of the rumors that were confirmed. And so let's start with some of the things that aren't park related. The first one I want to talk about is probably the one that got broke earliest, the gondolas. Yeah, if I didn't already know this about a year ago, it would have come as much more of a surprise. Yeah. But leave it to theme park fan sites to speculate on everything to death mm -hmm. and leave us with, oh, well, that's that's great. That's nice. Nothing really felt all that impactful except for a couple things because of theme park fan sites. Orlando Informer, theme park tours, so on and so on. Chip and Company, WDW Informa, Info. Didn't Not, help that Reedy Creek even confirmed it before Disney had let them confirm it. Yeah, I suppose. But yeah. Honestly, I think bringing the gondolas back, I mean, we had the Skyway at some point, but then it disappeared. I think it's interesting to bring it back as an actual transportation method. I, 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 I agree with you because it's, it's kind of like the monorail where it's a lot, it's a very unique sort of property that's going to be very, very hard to forget. It's very unique, but I question the efficiency because this is a gondola system being built in a state that is very prone to hurricanes. Is this gonna really work all that well? I, I'm I'm sure there's some contingency put in place. I'm I'm sure there is. Yeah. Um. But you know, if at most it's just don't run it when there's a storm within 20 miles, is it really gonna be that beneficial all around? I don't know. But when you look at Florida thunderstorms half the time, in the morning it could be sunny and humid, and then all in about 20 minutes you have a sudden freak thunderstorm on top of you. That's kind of what I'm saying, yeah. I think Disney really has planned for a lot of that, the, the, the sudden Florida storms. They'll probably have ways to keep the guests entertained at the stations, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, or those who are already on there, if they have to suddenly stop. Well, I'm sure they're going to have something installed where like, they can close little windows or something. Uh, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Well, the biggest reason they shut down the Skyway was because too many people were dropping stuff over the edge. So these are going to be completely enclosed. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the other thing, too, is, is that it's only going to, what, four resorts and Epcot and Hollywood Studios? Is it really going to be that beneficial? They, mm. I think they are because those are the parks within the next few years that are experiencing the most changes. Yeah, Caribbean Beach because it's getting that new DVC resort. Yeah. Um, one of them was like Art of Animation. I think All-Star Movies, one uh, of the All-Stars? Pop Century. Oh, is it Pop Century? Pop Century. It's one of the value resorts, I know that. And then uh, a newly announced um, DVC resort, the Disney's Riviera Resort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is going to be included on one stops. So this is going to be something where a lot of um, um, DVC members are going to have mostly access to. 
Yeah, I mean, do they really need another resort? No, but, you know, DVC members, you can always add value onto that membership, especially for what it costs to join now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, for a few hundred bucks more, you can join Club 23 or whatever, or Club 33. Yeah. <laughs> another confirmed thing that we do not have information on at the time. But hopefully we hear something soon. Did, did you guys sign up for the mailing list to hear when yeah. that's going to roll around? No, I, actually I didn't. I did. I should. <laughs> I signed both my mom and I up, so just in case one of us doesn't get the email, the other will. Okay. Not that we're ever going to be able to afford it any, in any of our lifetimes. We're millennials. We can't afford nothing. We can rent it, but we can't own a thing. No, my mom can't. Um, the second is the minivans, Disney's new Uber service. Um, from what we know, they're going to charge a flat free fee of about uh, $20 that can take you anywhere on Disney property to anywhere on Disney property and can take up to six people at a time. I think they've actually already started the service. We have seen a couple of the vans already roaming around Disney property quite actually almost literally the next day after they were announced. Yeah. That's quite the shocking turn of surprise. <laughs> They're here already. But hey, if anything needs help, man, it's Disney transportation. So I think it's an interesting concept. Have any of you ever met someone who's only been to Disneyland and just how blown away by are that things are apart from things? Yeah, yeah. I've ta I've met and spoken to plenty of those folks who are like, Disney World's how big? Yeah, it's four parks. And, and, and they're like, can't you just walk from one park to the other? Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> In California, you have two parks that are facing each other mouth to mouth. Here here in Florida, they're spread a couple miles apart. At best, you could go from Epcot to Studios and vice versa, but make sure you pack some comfortable walking shoes. Do leave, ladies, please leave the heels at home. If you really want to be able to walk between parks, you got to go up the road to Universal because everything is very centrally located there. Yeah. That's the park where you can do that. But, but that's not what we're talking about today. Nope. With, with, the, um, with the minivans, you know, I'm... Not sure if it really solves the problem of just adding more things on the road. Because that's oh, Disney's biggest problem. Be, be, being so big, they have all these buses rolling around just adding buses and making the buses longer, the slinky buses. And, of course, it's so, 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 so expensive to add another monorail track. Not to mention they don't have anywhere to put it. So that's why the gondola system works. But I don't know about these... Especially since they charge extra for them. I think it's honestly a further division of the Disney haves and have-nots. It's... It does kind of further separate the class of Disney Vacationer, mm -hmm. but I still think $20 flat rate to go anywhere, mm -hmm. that's still pretty accessible if you ask me. Now, I can see that being a starting point and it going up from there mm -hmm. um, as the service grows and expands. Mm -hmm. I but, feel like, oh, I'm sorry, no, I feel okay. like it's good in a pinch. Like, say you just got from the airport to your hotel, you have a dining reservation, say in Disney Springs, that might be clear on the other side, and to get on a bus, you're going to have to wait 20 minutes to get on the bus, mm -hmm. you're going to have to wait that 30-minute ride, practically, to get all the way over there, and by then, your reservation's gone. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this kind of works in a pinch. 20 bucks to make it to your reservation on time, to STK, or... I just wish it was, like, $10 or something, because then a lot more people would use it and it wouldn't feel like it was such a sting in the pocketbook. I mean, to, to be fair, $20 is about as much as a nine inch uh, uh, stuffed toy in the parks. You know. But then what about express transportation with the buses between parks? Yeah, Can we argue what that happened this to is that? the same? They're still doing it's it. Still okay. They're still doing that. Mm. It's, it's the same family, basically. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think $20 is a bit more accessible of a price point than to say, oh, you can come back here and we have express transportation for you. Yeah. Um, I think the minivans are a good, nice in-between point. If you're not wanting to get stuck on a Disney bus for 30 minutes. The smell um, on other people's armpits. And, <laughs> or getting stuck on the monorail because it's backed up. Smelling of diapers. Sorry, folks, there's a car wreck on the, the road. We'll the be on our way shortly. The gondola's down because there's a storm on the way. <laughs> Let those problems come as they come. Yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll deal with it as it comes, and they'll adjust the pricing as needed. At least until they upgrade to the Star Wars uh, transporter technology, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Speaking then, of. Then, we, uh, yeah, instead, let's talk about the Star Trek Hotel. Star Wars. Same difference. Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, confirmed at the D23 Expo, there is going to be an exclusive Star Wars hotel somewhere close to the property. Um we're going to imagine it's probably going to be somewhere near Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. Though there's a couple different places it can go. Very interesting that. But 
Um, this is a, they're promising you that they can immerse you completely in the theme and dialect of Star Wars the entire time that you're here. It's a new Disney 360 experience. Like, my guess is because they're having to start a whole new arm of the company, there may be others to come. So you're telling me they're building a whole land and building a whole experience and a whole hotel so you remain immersed in this one themed IP entirely so you don't ever feel like you're outside of this whole realm that is foreign to humans. That doesn't sound vaguely familiar at all, does it, Universal? Then well, again, we're talking about a franchise that is 40 years old now and has had just as many dedicated fans since the very beginning. So you can say the same about Harry Potter. Well, just not the 40-year-old part. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's going to be an incredibly interesting concept. It's going to be interesting to see how much they can stick with that theming, you know, given the very human nature of guests and uh, how you might have some people who might <laughs> try to break the theme. Let's see if we can get him to say this or do that, you know. You know, the same people who keeps asking, is Mickey a boy or a girl, you know, those delightful people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I think overall... If it is executed correctly, uh, it's going to create another supremely themed experience. It's going to rival Universal, if not beat the absolute pants off of them. It should be noted that this is going to be the first uh, hotel that's themed after one IP of the Disney company. I mean, you have Art of Animation, which is based on four different IPs, but mm -hmm. this is the first one based off of a single one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have a lo there's a lot of ways this could go wrong and a lot of ways this could go right. So this is a very, a very much a safe zone for them. Well, so Bella, uh, Bella, yes. um, as our resident Star Wars expert and fan, we want to hear your thoughts about this. And I am a woman. Anyway, <laughs> so not to mention um, this franchise is one of the biggest franchise in the history of movies. Um, you know there's going to be so many hardcore fans willing to pay for this willing to be immersed in this Star Wars and then you're gonna have some that are just like I just want to go do it just to say I did it I don't care about being immersed in this Star Wars and then you have people like me who just kind of think Star Wars and Star Trek are just kind of the same thing with different names <sighs> well the thing is it's interesting so many concepts being thrown around and while the only real confirmed thing we have is that it's going to exist a Star Wars hotel is going to exist. We just don't know the fine details of it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually, that is a good concept for that as well. Though from what we've seen in the concept art, yes, they're looking to make this incredibly immersive. Mm -hmm. um, and Disney is kind of, has kind of sold the promise that, hey, you're going to be able to step into this world and not step out of it until you check out. I mean, it's, it's starting to have me wonder now if that's going to be an experience that you're going to pay a premium on uh, versus those who would rather just stay at you know your standard resort I mean are they going to be exclusionary to those guests who just need a place to rest their feet or is this gonna is this gonna create another I keep bringing up the haves and have-nots you know mm -hmm. family of four who's been saving their entire life to come to Disney comes once the Star Wars Hotel because obviously their kid is crazy about Star Wars you know, maybe they don't have enough to do the full experience. Um, my hope would be, in that case, that Disney just makes it a full experience for everybody. You know that's not how it's going to be, though. Well, um, Disney, of course, this is Disney's right about how they want to do this on yeah. the levels of experience for the families that come in. Obviously, price point being one of the biggest factors of this, because it's not fair for little Timmy over here whose family can't exactly afford the big package while Jimmy from the other family can do the whole thing and just have a ball and it's it's not fair and we completely understand but I feel by then it's Disney's choice of part of what they are as a company how can we make their experience just as amazing as that other family's yeah what can and, we do and that's the thing too with Harry Potter um, I know you've brought this up more than once um, because, you know, your feelings about the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, how it's only immersive to the select few who choose to drink the Kool-Aid. Um, oh, have I brought that up once? I don't think once. I, I don't think so. Let's just ask Moaning Myrtle later. Um, but no, um, I guess kind of what I'm getting at here is that Harry Potter can have a little bit of that division. 
So I, I don't see it being completely unrealistic that Disney may have some of that divisionary stuff in there too. Like the kids who are able to buy the wand or the interactive wand. Mm -hmm. They do still have the two different wand types for the most part. I think my biggest question is is that where is reality going to uh, get in the way mm -hmm. of this theming? Because that's, that's always a huge question. Um, for example, whenever you go to the Disney parks and you see the touch points for the Magic Bands, yes, um, it's clear that they want to make this similar for everyone to use so they're easy to identify. However, you know the people in the show division want to make them themed to each of the different rides. Well, you can't have that because it confuses guests and it's just easier to make everything in uniform. Mm -hmm. So exactly where is a functioning hotel going to stop in favor for oh crap, we got to switch over to the uh, Star Wars um, jargon to make it all science future e. Honestly, unfortunately, I think this is a point that we're going to just have to leave to the Imagineers at this point. They apparently know what they're doing, and if they can create <laughs> Pandora where there is absolutely no Mickey Mouse and still find a way to utilize Fast Pass, you name it, that normally you would see a Mickey Mouse, they can do it. I, th I think we're going to touch upon a lot of this when we start getting down to galaxy's edge later on yeah so we'll get there yeah. in a minute, so, so so at least with the hotel thing you know you're going to check into a hotel you know what you're getting yourself into that's the way i look at it i don't mm -hmm. plan on going there anytime soon other than just to say oh i've been there so at least i can say that no one's ever going to wander there unintentionally and be yeah. lost um but let's move on to the next one let's go to the magic kingdom announcements the first one is the willis theater which supposedly is going to replace the uh the town hall uh building in town in uh, town square Honestly, this was the only surprise to come from the D23 Expo. I don't think anyone saw this coming. No, because uh, like none of the none of the fan sites were like, is this a thing? Mostly because this building has only been around, uh, at least in its current form, since what, 2011, 2012, something like that? Yeah. Uh, when, when they, when they, and then a few, a year or two later, that's when they started having the talking Mickey. Oh, uh, right, that's right. Yeah, they brought in like the magician Mickey, yeah, and he yeah, like yeah. knows your name and everything. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but now they're basing it off of a theater that's in Kansas City where Walt grew up. So it's like, okay, okay, touch of the Walt love. I like, I dig it, I dig it. Mm -hmm. There um, is still some of that left in the company, you know. <laughs> and then you said that there's, they're going to include like a stage performances in it, right? Yes, from what it sounds like, it sounds like we are going to expect full scale productions. And I'm talking near Broadway level quality. But the best example I could probably give is the uh, Frozen Live at the Hyperion over in Disney's California Adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, or Aladdin, the musical Spectacular that was there a couple years prior. Uh -huh. I feel like um, for this theater we're going to get a production on that level. Obviously we have no news of what show is going to go in there. We could get Frozen, but we don't know. There's literally nothing. This was so out of the out of left field that everyone's just kind of like, Okay, cool. Can't wait to see what happens. It's a cool concept. It really is. Honestly, I think uh, Magician Mickey's going to stick around, but I think there's only one other thing everyone else is waiting for. Oswald meet and greets. Nice. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's more a California thing. I it is right now, why... but hopefully they'll bring him over to Florida. It would be nice. Yeah. Um, and then next, uh, of course, was the big one that took everyone by surprise was the Tron coaster. Now, yes, yes, yes. There was the rumor that they were going to do the yeah. Tron coaster, but what was the big surprise? That they were going to spare the Tomorrowland Speedway. That was quite possibly the biggest surprise of all of D23. Uh, forget the Willis Theater. Tomorrowland Speedway sticking around. Though I, you do need an attraction for younger kids in Tomorrowland. Because other than Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger spin, you don't have a whole lot. Uh, the, the People Mover and the Carousel Progress. Okay, kids can ride them, yes, but just... Attraction. Yeah. I need my daily dose of exhaust fumes. Exactly. <laughs> keep running throughout the day. Um, but uh, this Tron... Co yeah. Um, with the Tomorrowland Speedway, we, I don't think we left very kind reviews on it when we did the review no. on it way back when. Um Honestly, I just remember doing the Sheriff John Bonnell impression from that review do it more than anything. <laughs> this guy thought he could get away, but he turned off into Tomorrowland, and now he's trying to ignite Stitch's great escape. He thought he could get away with it. I think we mostly, we spent most of that review doing, like, Mario Kart impressions and everything. <laughs> I think Crash Team Racing might have gotten a mention. Um, probably but the car art shows there. you flinging turtle shells at my cart. Yes. <laughs> um, so... 
Tomorrow Lane Speedway is going to be spared, whether or not that's going to get an upgrade. I think it's going to get a track um, restructuring in order to accommodate the Tron to. coaster. Like, like the Walt Disney World Railroad, there's a good chance they'll probably... And don't forget the pathway between um, Storybook Circus and Space Mountain. That's going to be a very heavily frequented um, yeah. pathway from now mm -hmm. on. Maybe mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. so much a smoking area anymore. Oh, I hope not. It, <laughs> interesting, though, that it's going in right next to Space Mountain. Positioning has a lot to do with how the park is set up. Yeah. So it's, I'm wondering if it's one is going to siphon off the other or if they're both just going to help enrich one another. I feel like between this and uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, there's a lot of coasters to be added to Magic Kingdom. And I think there's a lot of people saying Magic Kingdom needs more thrills. Okay, you're not wrong, but really? Well, it's for families. Yeah. Not all families like thrills. Is But is Tron really a family thing, though? Well, I feel it's like it has its fans. It's but. a coaster, so yeah. it's got to have a height restriction, and it's got to have a pretty tight one. I mean, I don't think... Uh, I haven't seen any of the footage from the sh one in Shanghai yet. I don't the think you guys I, have either. I have. You have? I okay. Have. Um, at, at, le at least here's the thing. Um, at least with Tron, it has a really cool setting. At least it has a very striking appearance. You can't mistake it for anything else. So at least it lends itself to an attraction in that way. Except for Test Track. <laughs> Yeah, the latest so... uh, Chevrolet test track looks a lot like Tron. Yeah, that begs a few questions. The Tron cart. No, um, it's... I still feel like, um, even though I saw the videos, it's a very impressive ride over there in Shanghai. I feel like it's literally America just kind of looked at it and said, I want that. <laughs> and and now you're sort of like, we're like, sure. Okay, yeah, you want it? Okay, well, we'll, we'll bring it over. And of course, this is going to be ready by 2021 in time for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. A lot of these projects are going to be done in time for the 50th anniversary, and that's probably going to cause something that we should talk about a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so looking forward to that. Let's move on over to Epcot. Um, the first one is the one that most everyone has kind of glanced over, uh, Mission Space. Um, there were rumors floating around that they were going to do a complete overhaul. They were going to drop Gary Sneeze, that they were going to do a whole retheming of the ISTC and something or other. But so far, all we've heard is that they're going to get a new green mission so that now people are going to be soaring over Earth. So honestly, I like this idea because now the people riding the green a mission aren't going to feel like they're just riding the subpar version of the orange version that they're going to have something to own and have something unique to it it is nice um i feel like they could have chose i feel like if anything you should have been able to choose the mission like that would have been a cool concept sure yeah like yeah of course you have to you do more ride film and shoot this and shoot that and what else but it's like that would have been really cool. Like, give people the choice of where they want to go and make green and orange have different choices. Mm -hmm. True. Though, honestly, it might have been a little much to try and do, especially in as little time as the... Uh... Now, is the new green mission actually up and running? Not as far as I know. Okay. I, I heard that that's still closed. I thought they pushed the opening date. To put in the new green mission? Maybe. I don't know. I, th I, I heard Mission Space might be the first phase of this Epcot overhaul yeah. but that's it's so up in the air we really do not know yeah there's so much new stuff coming to epcot that it's kind of hard to keep track of it all i mean you guys saw that new concept art that uh Chapek announced for right i mean it looks like so much is going to get changed overall so we're just going to have to knuckle down and see what happens mm -hmm. um uh the second thing they talked about was the new space restaurant this i really really like here's the thing that intrigued me they kept saying it was going to be next to mission space now, for those of you who haven't been to Disney World in a while, there's not a lot of room between Mission Space and Test Track. However, between Test, uh, sorry, Mission Space and Universe of Energy uh, slash the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride, there happens to be a empty building right there. What is there really? There is. Oh, they used to have. There used mm -hmm. to be a simulator, and there used to be a ride about how uh, conception works. And goofy and about hell. You're talking about the Wonders of Life Pavilion. I'm talking about the Wonders of Life Pavilion, which since 2006 has just been the festival center for um, beer and uh, sorry, the, beer and wine. Beer and wine <laughs> festival. <laughs> Some people treat it like the beer and wine festival. Well, ain't, ain't that the I truth? Mean, um, the, the 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 food and wine festival and the flowers and garden festival. But where are people gonna get their pass holder pins now? <laughs> Maybe where we get pin trainers. Yeah. Or maybe from Leonard Nimoy. So, 
There you are. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you looked at the concept art, you see that it's just this big round window into the galaxy beyond. Well, gee, I wonder if there's a big round domed building around there that could serve as uh, a uh, viewing platform outward. Planet Hollywood? With or without Guy Fieri, because I'd love to leave him in the vacuum of space. <laughs> Right in the heart of Flavortown. He can take his burgers. Flavortown with him. outer space. <laughs> um, and hopefully, having been to the Satuli Canteen from uh, Pandora World of Avatar, we know that they're able to do some creative cuisine. But I hope just as much as they're able to do something wild and galaxy filled, and um, and at the same time doing the down home familiar specials like the occasional cheeseburger. Mm, here's the thing: we have the electric umbrella for that. But is that going to be of this world much longer? I think that begs the question. Uh, yeah, with interventions basically going to be non-existent. It, you mm. fear most of future world, they're kind of next to the, uh, the fountain of nations and beyond um, the spaceship Earth. But I'm kind of worried. For but the future. electric umbrella is the future of 1982. Now it needs to go. Oh. <laughs> I, it's it, it's a little humbling for me. I mean, as someone who was born in the 80s, you look down on the carpet and you think about, well, what's every stereotype of the 80s that you think of, you know? And then you think, oh, yeah, circles, triangles, and squiggly lines and neon colors. Oh, so I wasn't just kidding. That was an actual thing people thought was the future. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, as much as, as much as I enjoy the food and electric umbrella, I've eaten there so many times. I think it's time for it to get a redo. Mm hmm not to mention the name itself, Electric Umbrella. What exactly does it mean? Uh, did it mean something back in 82? Or? I don't know. Um, Do androids dream of electric sheep? With electric umbrellas? I don't know. <laughs> the concept, I think, has been lost to time, and so maybe it should get lost with time. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to cry when that goes. But yeah, the new space restaurant, It's. it looks like they're going to do things with the windows. They're going to like... Maybe astronauts flying by. Maybe they can make it an educational experience. I have a feeling it's going to be a technology similar to what they do with the windows at the Be Our Guest restaurant where you look out and you'll see snow and then the landscape changes. And Maybe they'll do something like that because I think they could really have fun and take advantage of every sort of scenery that way. <laughs> maybe they could have Bill Nye floating by telling you facts about space. Space oh. is just cool. Exactly. Oh, man. He'll have hey, a new that home. would actually be pretty awesome. I would like that. He'll have a new home. And of course, you know, when you think about him on en Universe of Energy when talking about global warming, it's a hot topic with lots of questions. You know, this time it will be like, by the way, global warming is really important! <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway, speaking I of... I don't think he's looking too good for that anymore, though. I don't think he's going to do much more with Disney. Probably not. Um, no. um, anyway, speaking of Universe of Energy, Sue, um, by this time next month, Ellen DeGeneres... Um, and uh, Bill Nye and, and Alex Stupid Trebek Judy. and Stupid Judy and Stupid Judy <laughs> will be no more. Where Universe of Energy, Ellen's Energy Adventure, will close forever, and soon we will have Guardians of the Galaxy, where something happens with the something something. Insert something with the something 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 something. Climatic scene that you waited two hours for and resolve. And something that has nothing to do with Tower of Terror, Mission Breakout. Yeah, hey. I think, honestly, just the fact that we can have a Guardians of the Galaxy attraction in Disney is a testament to just how good and solid the Universal Agreement with Marvel is. Yeah, you look I back actually, into that. Yes, I did. I read through the whole thing just to be sure that this could actually happen without any sort of like lawsuit or argument or anything. Yes, the Guardians of the Galaxy are protected because they were not part of the Avengers, when the agreement was made. So, so nothing's going to happen. Don't even start that rule. But, but... But Avengers Infinity War, I believe it's called? It's coming in after the agreement. So yeah. there's actually there are actually terms in the agreement that actually allow for licensing for this. Our lawyer, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> but that being said, um, details on this ride, as of right now, are scarce. really scarce. Yeah. All we know is that it's going to be canon because they said that Peter Quill actually visited Epcot back in the 80s and which just, oh, They rocking. showed just the most adorable picture of like a little kid that's like right next to the Epcot. I think hopefully pre-Mickey's Wand, but... Oh, oh yeah, it was because it, it showed be. Epcot 82, which would only mean that he only had about two, three months to, uh, to visit there. Yeah. Which means, would he have... Oh, he wouldn't have seen Dreamfinder, because that came out the following year. Yeah. I'm just Aww. picturing a little Polaroid camera and getting a 
Sean yeah, I, I'm, it's, it's so a cool, cool little picture though. I like it. There's this new thing on Facebook now where they're doing this ad for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy on Blu-ray and 4K Ultra, where it's themed like an '80s commercial. <laughs> so you know that they're going to go all out and make it themed '80s. They're going to make it feel as '80s as possible. Nostalgia boards. Exactly, yes. and and at least when they do it that way, it's going to be tongue in cheek. So it's not going to feel like a dated reference. I can't wait to see if we get like. Um, I don't know if you guys... I did actually take some time to watch the Mission Breakout videos. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The Rocket Raccoon Animatronic. Mm -hmm. I, please, <laughs> Disney, please make this happen. Please. It's awesome. It, it was incredible. It it, it worked. We um, need our fuzzy trash panda. But, <laughs> but we know that it's not going to be Mission Breakout. We just know it's going to be Guardians of the Galaxy theme. It's going to be something about specific to Epcot. So, and someone even threw out a theory that maybe they're there to refuel since it was a universe of energy. So maybe there's going to be a loose tie into that? I don't know, mm. but I do know it's probably not going to involve the Collector in any way, because no. nice. they were a part of the cinema, like the Marvel Universe, yeah. before MCA signed. So yeah. it's... Like, so before Universal had it, the whole Collector thing was a part of the canon at that time. Mm -hmm. So they can't mention the Collector. No. Or have anything related to the Collector in there. So it's like, whew, what is this attraction going to be about? And what type of attraction will it be? Is it going to be a walkthrough? Is it going to be a slow ride? Is I don't think as be... many have suggested it's going to be a roller coaster. From what I've heard, though, they're real, the permits have a really expanded outward beyond... Universe of Energy, so it might be, because I mean, I, the earliest rumors about Guardians of the Galaxy ride was that roller it was coaster. supposed to take it, take over a rock and roller coaster so you could jam out to Awesome Mix. So maybe it could be something like that, but this is Epcot we're talking about. And for all people complaining about all the IPs being shoved in there, for all the um, stuff being added that just don't fit, you know, this could still work. They could still make this a fun place to be. This is a new vision of Epcot. This yeah. is not going to be the brand serial theme parks anymore. Come no. On. This is not Walt Disney's Epcot anymore. Uh, as sad as I... Never, I it someone, never was. It someone never was. had to say it, but I mean, it's going to be, I guess, a lack of better term, our generations. Yeah. Yeah, so let's own it. Let's let's yeah. have fun with it. Let's still celebrate future technology of tomorrow instead of the future technology of 1982. Please, come on. Um, so that being said, let's move on to World Showcase, where there was the Ratatouille ride that was yes! announced from Disneyland yes! Paris! Woo! Honestly, it could have been one of two options, actually, but I am glad they were going with Ratatouille, as it so deservedly needs it. it it's, it's funny, because if you look at the Disney canon, um, they're very much Anglophiles. So many Disney movies take place in England, but then right behind it, very close second, they're Francophiles. They got Hunchback, you got Cinderella, you've got Beauty and the Beast, you got Ratatouille... And there's just so many movies, and Aristocats, so many that take place in yes. France. I can't believe I forgot about Aristocats. But... I think most people did. And the punchline, the Aristocrats! I don't know. Everybody <laughs> wants to be a cat because they actually don't remember that the movie exists. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm a huge fan of this concept. Like, just, it is going to be based on the Disneyland Paris attraction. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember what the title is. It's like um, La Ponte de Vento de Remy, but something something like that. I don't remember sure. the actual title. But, but it's French, that's why. Because it's French, because it's French, because it's French! <laughs> but we're finally getting a trackless ride system. Yay! Yeah, The first confirmed Walt Disney one. World's first. <laughs> if, if, if nothing else beats it to it, which I doubt it doesn't. I doubt it. I'm really hoping they maintain its authentic French roots, because let's be honest... World Showcase has always been striving to have as much authenticity to it as possible. And and you said that the one in France is um, bilingual, so maybe we'll be able mm -hmm. to um, maintain that so it at least feels like it's trying to be as legitimately French as possible. Maybe, but considering it's that we're in the USA and it's a US theme park, English is the first language, they're definitely just going to pepper in some French words here and there. Bonjour, fromage. And um, if nothing yeah. else, we can say we can say with some confidence, hopefully some a lot of confidence, Patton Oswalt will be getting more work. We love you, Patton Man! Oh. We love you. <laughs> Alright, so that's all the stuff from Epcot. Now let's move on to the uh, uh, the last one. Hollywood Studios. The or as I like to call it, Disney's Wallywood Studios. Because it's going to be nothing but walls soon. There's a wall. There's a wall. There's another wall. Guess what, kids? There's another wall. And it's not even the popular Instagram wall. Lame. 
Nope. Um, oh, boy. So the first thing that they announced was that Toy Story Land is going to open in uh, 2018. There will so, be less walls. Wait, no, that works against what but, I'm trying to say. Actually, I'm, happy, I'm really happy that yes. it's, come, it's so close. We finally hear about all these plans that are coming. We finally get at least one that's within the reach. It kind of reminds me of when they did New Fantasyland, how they opened bits and pieces up in phases at a time. Yeah, but that was still kind of depressing to just kind of watch from afar. And even though we did get bits and pieces all the way up into the completion of Seven Dwarfs, it's nice that when this Toy Story Land is completed, it's all completed. Mm -hmm, We're going to yeah. get it all. And yeah. that's going to feel great. I'm hoping that they have not actually parred down the Slinky Dog ride, as was rumored. Because mm -hmm. um, there's apparently there's a little bit less land for it or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I am, you know, it's nice. Toy Story Mania is probably one of my favorite attractions at uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's nice that that has expanded. Uh, yeah, and you know, and we can always use more Toy Story because I mean, there there are going to be more Toy Story movies. There are going to be more Toy Story specials. They did they, they Tom Hanks just can't escape this movie. Well, at <laughs> least his brother can. Jim can't. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm excited about that. Um, mostly about that, you know, having that and having a fully realized land around it and the Slinky Dog ride. Mm -hmm. I could care less about what is it, alien swirling saucers. Mm -hmm. Uh. Based on the little green men. Yeah. yeah. But on the other hand, too, it'll finally have rides in the park. I mean, for so long, Hollywood Studios Indeed has it. been, only had like six rides when you included Backlot Tour, and now with, when they take away the great movie ride, we'll get into that next, um, and they take that away next month, it'll, there'll only be four rides. There'll be the Star Tours, there'll be Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, and, and Toy Story Mania. And Toy Story Mania. That's it, just four. Just four, four rides. rides. I mean, we can actually build rides. <laughs> like what how concept? Universal can make motion simulators, right? <laughs> <laughs> and rides without screens. <gasps> screens. Oh. <laughs> 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 screens. Um. So, so that that yay would be, Toy Story Land. Um. We're okay. excited. We can't wait. And then um next um um actually, which which one should we talk about the um whichever one because are we gonna save that big one for last yeah let, let's talk about mickey's runaway railway of course here we go so we talked about the removal of the great movie ride coming out next month and some of you remember the great movie ride is the only standing attraction from opening day may 1st 1989 Built to represent the Grauman's Chinese Theater and took you into the classic world of movies from Footlight Parade to The Public Enemy, Alien, Wizard of Oz, and Fantasia. And it was meant to be this great loving homage to movies. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, times have changed now and it's no longer about the Hollywood that always was and never will be, as Michael Eisner said. It's no longer um, this great dedication to movies anymore since, you know, people will, may remember a Charlie Chaplin movie, but who watched Footlight Parade? Only the ones who are like us, us obsessed yeah. with Disney and theme parks, those who are obsessed with the old and Hollywood. Right, and maybe your 89 year old grandmother who might have seen it as a kid. So, you probably can't ride it anyway. Now, okay. there were rumors for a long time that it may have been like turned into a Disney villains ride, which honestly I think would have been awesome. And then they, there were rumors that it was going to be... The a, Great Mickey Ride. That it was going to be a dedication to Mickey's greatest moments in history, and that would have been cool. Going through an immersion scene of Steamboat Willie, you know, preferably to the point where he's not torturing the cats. Uh. <laughs> or pulling on the pig teats. <laughs> yeah, and then um, and Fantasia and uh. band concert. Ooh, even Runaway Brain would have been awesome. Would have been cool. That would have been. Nice that would have been cool. See, you stop. You stop the cart there, uh -huh. and the runaway brain. Blah, 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 the runaway brain scene just happens all around you. That would have been cool. Like you know, instead of your cowboy or gangster, that's your. Ooh, what if they had an animatronic like you do at a uh, Reign of Kong? But it's uh, Julius the Pete character, oh. just just right there. <laughs> Whoa. They should let us. They should let us armchair Imagineer for a day. Just, just saying. And we so, should be CEOs for one day. There's so much. I all three of us, all together, all at once. Chaos would ensue. All and the parks would be shut down. So now that great legacy is coming to a close, even after the buyout of Turner Classic Movies from what not even two years ago at this point. Yeah, I think the the contract was only supposed to last three years, and it lasted less than three years. Um, I think a large part of that had to do with um. um, um Osborne guy? Robert Osborne uh, yeah. passing away. Oh. So, you know, you can't really have that when he just, when he passed away some months ago. And then, so now it's going to be Mickey's Runaway Railway, where it's supposed to be this madcap adventure of riding with Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy 
on this train. Now, I think here's where things get a little dicey because it's based off the current Paul Rudish Mickey Mouse cartoons. Now, I like these cartoons, just to be fair. It's But what's weird is that I never realized this until I started like reading um, Tony Goldmark's tweets, uh, yeah. Subdurb with the Camera. I never knew there was so much division about like the Paul Rudish cartoons. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought they were pretty universally liked, but a lot of people don't like the style. A lot I, of people don't like the way that the characters are depicted. When, no, when don't I apologize. When for I it. messaged Tony on Facebook, I referred to the Mickey as spastic, unhinged, shrieking. And to be fair, I think that's a fairly fair summation. Um, a little. My my only concern is that does it date the ride? Because here's the thing. These are the current Mickey Mouse cartoons that are currently on Disney Channel and Disney XD. So does that mean that they're going to keep Brett Ewan and doing the little, little legitimately, hi everybody, welcome to Disney, versus the ah, 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 Mickey that they have on TV? Uh, I don't know. It, it's, it, that's where things get a little confusing. I think, I think for the spirit of this particular ride, um, and that's not to mention what this ride is supposed to do, it's supposed to draw you into kind of this madcap world. You take the railway and it runs away and mm -hmm. gets you, you know, you're supposed to be surrounded by the cartoons. Disney's doing something called Two and a Half D. It's, it's a little <laughs> well, wild, to be quite honest. Then they just admitted it's some type of motion simulator ride. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, and let's not forget that a Mickey Mouse ride had been in the works at least since the 70s. Ward Kimball, one of Walt's nine old men, actually worked on a Mickey's Madhouse attraction that sadly and Obviously, never came to be. Yeah. Mickey so, did get a ride of sorts, though. Mickey's full heart magic. I think you can. It's a Mickey attraction, not a Mickey ride. And it's the difference. Okay, first, first of all, Mickey appears in it in less than a minute of the whole thing. It's a ride about Donald. Number two, it's also a show. It's not a ride. It's an yeah. attraction, yes, but that's, but that's you know really splitting hairs at this point. Yeah, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. I really hope that they do something great with this attraction because right now their biggest bragging point is the two and a half D and the catchy theme song. Okay. So I guess we're getting a new It's a Small World. And I mean that on the annoying tone. I we're going to get a new that. annoying tone. My, my biggest concern is that, you know, as much as I love the... I, I can admit the charm that the Paul Rudish cartoons have. Why does Goofy look like a deflated walrus? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just because I think Paul took from a lot of the different styles that the older cartoons had. They blended it with some of the newer stuff, but they went back to the old and did this. And there's really, they still follow kind of the rules of animation, but he's got his own little twist on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I just hope for one thing on this ride. What's we that? go to Potato Land. Potato oh, Land! Land! Potato, Potato Land! Land! I see it every night in my dreams. <laughs> Potato land. Potato land. <sighs> I need that. So, so there that is. We do have some love for the Paul Rudish Mickey cartoons. At least that particular one. <laughs> At least they've, they've been around for four years now, so it's not just like still a new thing that we can be mad about. But here's the other... Th I just want to say one more thing about it, and then I think we can uh, move on to the big development. Yeah. So, the point of these cartoons, I feel, has been to try and draw a new worldwide audience in. Think, all the different places that these uh, cartoons have taken place. France, Spain, Japan. Russia, India, Brazil. Yeah. Japan, yeah. You, they're, here, they're trying to draw in a new worldwide audience, and now you have a place where all this is going to be focused. And that I can always get behind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. bring Globalism. The bring, bring the people together. Well, Mickey Mouse is one of the most recognized things in the world, period. You take one look at Mickey, and you can probably take the picture, go around the world, and show it to people. Mm -hmm. A good 95% of the time, people are going to still Mickey Mouse or Disney. Yeah. Or, at the very least, America. Yeah. There's yeah. no bacon in this picture, but okay. <laughs> um, all right, so... We're, we're looking forward to this, at least me with cautious enthusiasm. You guys are a little bit more... I'm a lot more excited about it. I am on the opposite spectrum. I as I don't agree with this whole animation thing, but that doesn't mean I won't write it. Mm -hmm. I mean... Or I at least give it a chance. Yeah. I will give it a chance. I will write it, and if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I'm sorry, I don't. But Exactly. We'll the, see. The thing is, we just we give it a chance. That's exactly. that's the most we can do, and that's that's the most we can do for any of this. As much as we love or hate uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or Tron or Star Wars or what have you, 
the most we can do is give it a shot, and if we like it, we like it. If we don't, we don't. And at the end of the day, we can't at least say we didn't give it a shot. Yep. All right. Because even me, for someone who's scared of the Haunted Mansion and Dinosaur and Tower of Terror and Doctor Doom's Fearfall and Revenge of the Mummy, at least I wrote them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Um, the big one. The big Here one. Here it um, is. Uh, okay, that's um, uh, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings mashup, right? Nah. You're killing me, Smalls. Wrong theme park. No. <laughs> but what has... Um, they finally announced um, for the Star Wars land it actually has a name. It is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yay. Kind of a good name. It is. Good name. I like, it's very, like, you know, you, there could have been a million directions they could have taken this. I mean, they literally could have just called it Star Wars Land. And I don't think people would have really bettered an eye. Uh, yeah. Although if you called Pandora, Pandora Land, I would have been. I, I, actually, I think I heard Avatar Land more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have definitely not sold the story for me at all. <laughs> But hey, Galaxy's Edge. I think it's a good, neutral name. It's exciting. All right, so what do we know about Galaxy's Edge? What What's going to be there? How are we going to be immersed in this world? You want me to take over? or Please, you, please. Yeah, I'll, 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 be, I'll summarize the best I can. So we're When getting... you're not interning at, at, at Oak Inns, you know, you might as well divulge all your Star Wars know-how. Exactly. I mean, I might have lost that gig. We can't confirm that. But I'm still in good standing with the, king, with the queen and princess. So <laughs> the queen. Anyway... So, confirmed, we already know two rides, Millennium Falcon ride, and the, uh, oh, not really named yet, but affectionately pet-named Alcatraz ride, which we had a ride vehicle design revealed, literally yes. on preview day of D23, and it looks interesting. It does. Then, Reminds me of the Transformers ride vehicle, actually. A little bit, but this is also going to be a ride where you're expected to be getting up and out of the vehicle and then back to the vehicle, it's a really weird concept. Something about you're being thrown into the middle of a battle between the First Order and the Republic. And the, was... the, the, uh, not the Resistance. It's not, it's not the uh, Rebellion. <laughs> it's, it's because of the weird timeline. It's set before Episode 7, but after Episode 6. And for those who are really into the timeline like I am, it's before Jakku was invaded by the Empire. I'll let you figure that out on your own if you've played Battlefront, but... Don't don't anger the nerds. Don't anger the nerds. Basically, I um, feel the uprising from here. I feel disturbance of the Force. <laughs> it's like Pandora, where you are separated enough from the action, but you're still within the familiar elements. So you may not be near Luke Skywalker or Rey or BB-8, per se, but you're going to be in the story. You're making your own story on the galaxy's edge where your own story affects around you mm -hmm. not so much the storyline of the main storyline but what you do affects or at least around you and your actions for the whole day and honestly this is i feel like this is like a like a glimpse into the future not just of theme parks but of themed entertainment in general it's really starting to take more of the interactive participant role and taking it way beyond what we've had in years past. Yeah. I don't disagree, and I think that's phenomenal because, you know, Disney can always uh, go forward with this, especially for an IP that's so famous and so popular. My big question is, are you able to turn it off? <laughs> well, what we've been brainstorming ourselves, if we ever were Imagineers, was um, Cough, maybe... cough, hire us, Imagineering, cough, cough. They don't know our real names they can't <laughs> so basically um we thought maybe this could work like the sorcerers of the magic kingdom game in magic kingdom where it's optional you can sign up to create your own story in the star wars universe and go through with it full-heartedly or if you just want to show up for an hour you just want to ride that one ride hopefully it's less than an hour wait <laughs> that's gonna be me millennium falcon ride line starts back there so <laughs> You could just go That's ride that ride. <laughs> it's reaching up, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> and rounding the space station. Oh. Not the restaurant, the actual space station. <laughs> oh, Pandora. That's, no, that's no moon. That's, that's the, the line of the Death Star. <laughs> so. uh. Death Star, countdown to extinction. Anyway, <laughs> so basically we think maybe this could be a fun optional thing for guests because, you know, everybody 
wants their own thing. They either yeah. want to be involved or not so much. Maybe they just want to go ride their ride and then just go make it over to Toy Story Land to go catch Mania. You know, that's that's a great option for people. Okay, building on that, can I just suggest that the division between the two lands is just a pile of toy, uh, sorry, um, of a uh, uh, Star Wars toys. That would actually be pretty funny. <laughs> that would be, and <laughs> yeah, you just find a whole bunch of like Empire rubble here and there, and then you start finding like little toys and stuff. Yeah. They're getting bigger and bigger, and then all of a sudden you're in Toy Story Land where you're the size of a toy. That's, yeah, exactly. It's a yeah. nice segue to it. I like you it. Know? It's not going to happen properly, but. Don't, don't dash my hopes just yet. Just just wait till I'm visiting there and then I'm forced to endure the storyline. Then then you can crush my dreams. I'll make you use the restrooms. <laughs> anyway. But I, I like that idea, though. I like the idea of allowing guests to choose their level of participation. And better than having them sign up when they arrive to the land, mm -hmm. my goodness, what if you tie it into my Disney experience? So that's that's going to be a given, I think. Yeah. Yeah. RFID technology has definitely come such a long way from when we first started. I think one of the big things I remember when they announced it was um, the Scuttle animatronic in the Under the Sea of the Little Mermaid yeah. was that he could talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's actually kind of cool. Can he really do that? And they were like, oh, yeah, we just haven't turned it on yet. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting definitely into it. The hitchhiking ghosts on the yeah. Haunted Mansion now know where you're from. I'm sorry. And um, <laughs> it's a small world. We'll say goodbye to you in your native language. Yeah. And I'll say personal goodbyes to you when you leave. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's no longer yeah. about a broad stroke hoping that it hits everyone. Disney is trying to hit individual guests. And that can be hit or miss depending on who they skip over to get at it. But now it seems like they're really honing in on being able to actually hit on just most every demographic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm still more concerned about... I just want to go there, ride a ride, and get off and just go on with my day because I'm I'm not a Star Wars fan. I will freely admit that, much to the fiery rage of the internet. I get that. Put that down. Put it down. I got uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but he, but as Server Clock has pointed out, even Harry Potter world has always just kind of just ignited my rage of just how ostracizing it is. You go there, you're not supposed to know the outside world. You're not supposed to drink Coke. You're not supposed to go to the bathrooms. You're not supposed to go to ATMs. You're supposed to go to the whizzling wag waggle doodly thingies. And uh, I just, I, I can't do it. I can't get into it. Star Wars, I'm worried he's going to be on the same way. However, there's two things that I'm thinking about. Number one, Star Wars has been around for over 40 years at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. So it has a greater legacy. So even if you don't, you haven't seen the movies, cultural osmosis has told you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's going to be inside jokes everywhere. However, Pandora did the one thing that I was really concerned about. And they succeeded because you don't have to watch Avatar from 2009. If you do, great. It'll make it cooler. But it's that's not what it's about. It's not about building on the story. There's no Jake Sully. There's no Nate Thierry, There's no un okay. There is unobtainium, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, you're in a whole new world with new stories, and you can just go in there and go out without uh, having to really do your research. Yeah. And I want Galaxy's Edge to be like that. But if they're building up all this story that you can't, that you have to have consequences to how your rides turn out. Well, great. I crashed the vehicle and I got to have that on my credit next time I ride Tower of Terror. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think mainly because Pandora could succeed was because the franchise is so young. Yeah. And James Cameron has four sequels coming to the first film. So it's still in its literal beginning stages. And hopefully do better in popular culture. I mean, Avatar was a box office hit, sure, but popular culture is where it's going to succeed. Yeah. Where it has exactly. to. Exactly. And it's it's hard to look at Star Wars, if, especially for a lot of movie directors, and be like, I want to do that too. I want to make such a huge cultural impact like that. I feel like that's how James Cameron feels about his movies. And even this new film, Valerian, or something like that, even the director said he was inspired by Avatar mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. So it's like, it, this is going to be a never-ending cycle. A never-ending story. I've never seen that. You've never seen the never-ending story? I, I know about the big fluffy dog and the horse dying in the That's swamp. That's Falcor! Luck Dragon. 
What about the, what about the horse dying that, in the swamp? Oh, uh, Atax? Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> the, the Swamp of Sorrows. This they, is the cultural thing we're talking yeah. about. I have not seen the movie, but I know enough about the horse dying in the swamp and the big furry dog thing. Falcor the Luck Dragon. Hashtag just saying. Hashtag watch the dang movie. Hashtag you got your revenge. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I think... Uh, We've, I think we've made a lot of the points that we've wanted to make tonight. Yeah. Um, Most of them. There's probably one thing that okay. I just wanted to point out. It's yes. just going to bother me. Not this last uh, probably several-ish years, we've seen Disney World in a constant state of construction. Almost wherever, whichever park you went to, something was going on. Except yeah. Epcot, but we're not going to get into that now because they're getting their time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now... It's just going to continue because every most everything we've been talking about has been announced to debut before the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, and that's four four years away, mm -hmm. roughly yeah. four ish yeah. years away. It's not going to end. I mean, obviously, Walt said that Disneyland itself would never be finished, yeah. but I under I, I get it. It's not going to be finished, but are we ever going to be satisfied? Are we ever going to be happy with just seeing construction walls everywhere? Because obviously we've been griping about Wally World in yeah. Hollywood Studios. Um, Holly Wall Studios, how about that? So I just, I still like that Wallywood Studios <laughs> still rolls the, off the But you see my point. Yeah. The ultimate thing is, is that we have to remember is that the goal that we're aiming for in the final end. Because, I mean, going through Disney Springs for the past five or six years was a nightmare. When they yeah, shut down the parking lots, mm -hmm. and then when they started uh, re repaving the roads. Long story short, we now have two parking garages, and now we have a lane that's dedicated exclusively to the buses. So now we can actually look back on it and just kind of say, yeah, it's kind of worth it. There, there's a saying I like to say in this kind of instance, and this is something I say every now and then whenever I'm going through a rough time. Today's struggles are tomorrow's experience. Mm -hmm. So that by the time it's all over... It, it'll be fine. Yes, there will always be construction going on, but it won't be at the same place for eternity. It just will be that way for a few years. And Unless we're talking about I-4. It'll never be done. <laughs> <laughs> and Disneyland. Maybe that'll, that'll get done in time for Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. <gasps> wow, that's such an honorary project from the state of Florida. <laughs> and considering what Disneyland went through in 2005 with their... 50th anniversary what can we expect from Walt Disney World's uh, golden anniversary I know the contemporary resort has a time capsule um, in the in their hotel oh, when are they planning on opening it for the 50th, 50th anniversary. anniversary oh my goodness so oh, we'll man. have to wait and see and and just just to cite my sources on this this is from a Walt Disney World for kids by kids burn bomb book so if you want to bust my chops that's where I got it from so call me out if I'm if I'm wrong on that but if someone could help me out there just please let me know um, all right, so as we close out, close out the hour, does anyone have any final thoughts, any hopes, dreams, aspirations, critical comments? Uh, honestly, I'm just I'm really excited to see what all this is going to bring to the table. Um, it's really going to help uh, Central Florida's theme parks grow as a whole. I know we're all really excited because, hey, more attractions to review. Yes. <laughs> when um, we get around to reviewing them, we know you guys are waiting, but please be patient with us. Real, as you may have noticed, we don't do ads on these videos, and that's for a whole bunch of different reasons, but because we actually have to do jobs that pay money mm -hmm. and stuff, that's where we have to spend a lot of our time. So if you're wondering why we haven't been doing reviews, that's pretty much why. But that's why we're doing these, so we can make sure we at least catch up with you to let you guys know. We know you're there, we know you're listening, and we know you're a dedicated fan base, and the last thing we want to do is leave you hanging. So, so thank you. From yeah. the bottom of our hearts, we love you. Thank, thank you. you. Right. So, anyway, uh, Celebella Rella, any final thoughts? Uh, this is going to be a very exciting future. Literally, there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day, and I can't wait to celebrate the 50th with you guys. This is going to no. be an interesting 50th anniversary. I know it's like four years away. But Don't still. bust my chops. But <laughs> you understand, by the time we're getting all of this, by then, we're probably going to get a lot more projects announced. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the future is going to hold for us? I that's, just that's part of what makes it exciting. What if we get like a huge announcement? I'm gonna let's let's make bets now. 
Um, our 50th, what if we get the big announcement that maybe we're going to get a fifth park in Walt Disney World? What? You that understand that would be the time and place to do it. What, maybe and, something with Indiana Jones, you know, the forgotten stepchild of Lucasfilm. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> who knows? The future is bright, but um, this is a great time to be a Disney fan. It's a great time to be a theme park fan. Exactly. In the Orlando area. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm, I'm practicing the foresight. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I think that's about all we have, everyone. So until next time, I'm Tab G. I'm Surfer Clock. And I'm Cella Bellarella. And where? What's the attraction? Where all work is your vacation. vacation. And may the Schwartz be with you.